Hi, welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Olina and I'm a native from Norway. And today I'm going to share with you my 2023 inlets. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about my 2023 knits and I've decided to just focus on everything I made myself because those are the items I've kept. I've done a lot of gift knitting and I don't think it's quite as easy talking about projects when you no longer have them. And also I knit a lot this year. I made a lot of baby shower gifts, really small things and I just knit a lot and if I was going to speak about every single thing I made we would be here for hours so I've decided to stick with what I made myself and I made myself uh, 17 um, different things uh, though I made quite a few garments but I also have some accessories some sofa scarves shawls stuff like that um, but before we get into everything I made myself I thought I'd just share my stats for 2023 because I really like stats. Um, I have been doing those since I started back knitting in 2020, in 2020 and I really like to look back at it, see what kind of yarn I've been loving, see how much time I've had to knit, see how much I've knit, uh, how many things I've been able to finish, how much yarn I've used. So I have done that this year as well and I don't compare myself to anyone else but I think it's really nice to see how it's evolved throughout the years and this year I ended up with 113 projects which is a lot and I think that's mostly because I've done so much baby nets and I've done a lot of really small hats and socks and those are just really <laughs> quick nets um, and I've used 19,411 grams of yarn for those projects. I think most of that yarn is here behind me because these are definitely the heaviest things I've made. Um, and I've used 400 skeins of yarn. Um, so I just think that's really fun to know all of that. I use an app called Knit and Note and when I track my um, projects and log all of the grams in there they tell me how many skeins I've used and how many meters so I think that's really fun and I really like to keep a track of just how much I made how many skeins I use a month everything I just love stats um, but I try to not compare myself too much year to year and just look at it as like a fun way to see how my knitting and knitting time evolves um, through getting a family, my son growing up, everything. So I try not to uh, um, be too harsh with myself if I, if I knit more or less. And I definitely try to not um, look at what others are doing and compare myself too much to that. So that's just a head up. So um, to not compare yourself too much. But I think we can head into what I've been knitting on this year. 2023 for me started off by me thinking that this is the year where I want to get more into and do a lot more knitting for myself. I wanted to get better at thinking more about what patterns do I really want for myself because basically all the time I think about what kind of baby knits or uh, things for my son I want to do that occupies my brain all the time so I wanted to add in that mix also thinking about things I would really like for myself things I wanted in my wardrobe uh, and stuff like that I wanted to get better at knitting for myself uh, but doing that with a lot of intention and just not knitting for myself because I'm knitting for myself but really making things I really wanted in my wardrobe and that has resulted in this lovely bunch back here um, and I did that by setting myself a goal of knitting one thing each month 
uh, and just thinking about what do I want my project for this month to be. I also kind of didn't want to knit more than one thing a month because I wanted to give myself enough time to think about what I really want. Uh, towards the end of the year I kind of shifted a bit out of that because I had a lot of things I wanted to knit. But yeah, my goal for 2023 was one knit for myself each month. Um, I didn't really have a strict rule about it being a garment or accessory but I ended up wanting mostly accessories both wanting to knit them the most and wanting them in my wardrobe the most so I ended up with a lot of garments I have two camisoles I made seven sweaters and I made three cardigans and I made one dress and then I also have um, some accessories some scarves some hats um, but I think we can get into it. I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it uh, January through December because that's how I think about my nets since I spend so much time thinking about them being separated into months and um, I kind of think about them now as my January cardigan or my February sweater um, but first up last year was this uh, Agnet cardigan. I kind of wanted this as my uh, Christmas Eve cast on but the pattern uh, didn't release until January but as soon as, as this released I got it. I, I had already gotten the yarn for it when the pattern released so I cast this on very quickly and I love this. Um, I just barely finished this in January. I think I finished it the last day of January just because I really wanted to finish it in January. Um, and yeah, this is the Agnet by Petite Net. I don't have buttons in it because I prefer the look of it unbuttoned. So I just have not bothered sewing in the buttons. I made mine in Drops Lima and Drops Kid Silk in the color of white, both of them. And I really enjoy the color this has. Um, I really wanted it in white because I think you can see the stitches and uh, it is a brioche uh, cardigan and I think you can see the stitch definition a lot better in a really light cardigan versus something dark and I was between um, white and blue and that's kind of what decided it for me. Um, I think my guess for this is way off. If you've seen the pictures, here's what mine look like. It's very skin tight in the sleeves and honestly in the body too. It just doesn't look that way because I never button it. So I think my gauge is way off. I think my gauge is way tighter uh, because the original is just really baggy. But I have to say that I kind of prefer it this way. I really like the way it hugs my arms and I think I could maybe uh, block it a bit harder because I haven't really blocked it blocked it I've just washed it um, but I'm happy with the fit as it is so I don't think I'm going to aggressively block it um, <clears throat> I have not depilled any of these this year because I wanted to show how they're holding up after a year and this one is the one that's a year old and you can see there's a bit of Peeling here and on the elbow and a bit on the side here but I've used this a lot and it's the oldest thing from 2023 the first thing I made so I don't think this peeled a lot really because it was used so much <laughs> for a full year and it's not been depeeled at all so just a little bit of peeling on the sleeves I don't think is too bad I also got a uh, Petite Nets deep pillar uh, for Christmas from my parents, so I'm really excited to deep all of these uh, cardigans and sweaters after this video. But this was my first knit. Um, I think all of these uh, almost are made in size medium because my width around here is 92 centimeters, so I usually go for medium. But that's the first thing. And then I made this sweater here. And this is the Hazel sweater. <clears throat> I made this 
in I used Drops Puna for this, which is not the recommended yarn, and I don't think it really gives the right kind of fabric at all either, because uh, I think the fabric is meant to be a bit stiffer kind of, you know, like 100% wool can sometimes be a bit stiff and not have such uh, uh, a lot of ease in it, or um, what's it called, um, drape. So I think this sweater is meant to be a bit stiffer and heavier and sit a bit differently, but I had a lot of drops puna in my stash and I really wanted to use it for something and then I saw the hazel sweater and I thought that would be perfect. Um, so I knit this whole sweater using only drops puna, held single, not held with mohair, not uh, held with anything else. This is in the color peanut. And even though I don't think the fabric or the gauge or anything really is 100%, I also really love how this turned out. Um, it has lovely drape, it's so warm because it's 100% alpaca. Um, the thing that's uh, giving me the most problems because the gauge and the yarn is all wrong is that it's a bit harder to block so the shoulders are dropped enough um, and since it has a lot of drape it very easily rises up and gets a bit short on the sleeves as well um, but it is a really chill sweater to just throw on it also has this lovely split here it's a really high split uh, it goes to about about my waist and I really like that effect as well and um, because usually I don't really like when sweaters go past my hips but since this has a split it still kind of accentuates my waist and I don't end up looking like a box because I very often end up looking like a box if uh, it extends past my hips because those are the widest points so if the sweater clings to my hips everything is just going to look like a box so I think this is a really way, nice way to combat that. Um, I'll show how much this has peeled. This also, even though I've used it a lot to chill in and it's 100% alpaca, it has not peeled a lot. It's peeled in the same places. Um, not that much on the body actually, but just all the way down the underarm. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with this as well. And I must say that 2023 definitely has been a year where I've experienced, uh, experimented a lot more with what types of yarn I use and how far from the original yarn and original um, kind of intention for the fabric. I've ventured away from that a lot and I've often ended up with uh, items I like even more than I think I would like the original one uh, but I've also <laughs> made some mistakes along the way um, but that's it for my February sweater and then we can move into my March one and this is also a bit modified this is also petite net I've knit a lot petite net this year and this is her cumulus tee, but as you might see, it has long sleeves. Um, and that's uh, simply because I didn't love the way the cumulus blouse is knit using two strands of mohair. I don't, I just don't love the thought of knitting with two strands of mohair or wearing two strands of mohair. So I wanted something that looked like the cumulus blouse, but a bit thinner and without um, mohair or a smaller gauge I mean um, and I found the cumulus tee and I decided I'll just knit that and then keep knitting the sleeves and that's what I did. For this I've used Drops Flora um, which is not the recommended yarn but that's very close to the recommended yarn it's just a fingering weight yarn so the biggest modification I made for this was the sleeves. I think they're supposed to stop around here, but I just continued knitting them and I 
knit them with decreases all the way down the sleeves but those are really hard to see in this grey yarn and this one too has pilled uh, a bit uh, drops flora drops lima and drops nepal uh, all pill a lot for me um i don't know why that is but those yarn they're all kind of the same yarn just different uh, thickness they are all i think it's 65 percent wool and 35 percent alpaca and those yarn pill a lot for me but they're also really nice to knit with, really nice to wear, and they're really warm, so I continue knitting with them anyways. Um, but I don't think this is too, too bad, considering it's knit in one of the yarns that pills the most for me. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's a lot to say about this. Um, the one thing is uh, I don't love the hem on the body. I don't know if it's something I did wrong, but it curls up a lot. If I just throw it on, it curls, curls, um, and I don't know how to uncurl that. Also, it's really tight, uh, so when I'm pulling it over my head and over my shoulders, it's really uh, tight to get over there. Um, I think that might be why it curls up so much. I did follow the pattern on it, but I have thought about maybe ripping back and doing the eye cord run without doing decreases as you're knitting it. Um, but I don't know, but that's my cumulus tee and I love it as a sweater. It is a really nice lightweight sweater, a fingering sweater is always really nice to have. Um, so I'm really happy I did that. And then in April I wanted something on a bit of a bigger gauge because I was knitting a lot on 3mm both for myself and with all the gifts I was making. So I decided to go completely the other way from a small gauge and I started knitting the it's a sweater number 14 v-neck by My Favourite Things Knitwear. Uh, this was my first time knitting on My Favourite Things Knitwear pattern. Um, and that was really fun to try out a new designer. Uh, with this too, I made some modifications with the yarn I used. This is it. I don't know what size I did in this. I think I maybe went for a small. Just because um, I am... I haven't knit that many oversized sweaters before, so I wanted to kind of give myself an ease into it, not go for the full oversized look, but this is still very, very oversized. Um, what I love about this too is that it has the split. I think that really helps when you have sweaters that are a bit longer. I also love to wear this a bit more back. Uh, just so the v-neck doesn't get too deep because if you wear it all um, if you wear all of the v-neck fabric at the front it's a very low cut v-neck so I just prefer to put it a bit back um, I also fold up the sleeves on this one because um, the ribbing is just really long and I don't want it getting in the way when I'm doing things when I'm knitting when I'm cooking um, the sleeves for this is also really big, so when I'm moving around, they move around a lot. And it's all, I can't do this, because if I move, they'll, they'll just come down <laughs> immediately. So those are some parts that I don't love, especially this. But if I'm going to do something where I need my sweater to stay like this, I'm just not going to wear this. Um, other than that, this is... a uh, Great sweater. I used it a lot. I use it a lot in winter and I use it a lot in summer just because it's really easy to throw on top of everything and it's big enough to uh, be put on top of almost uh, almost anything. I can wear some of my sweaters under here even and, I've ha and I would have room. Um, the modifications I made for this, the original, I think is made with one strand of fingering and two strands of mohair and I thought that's going to be 
so ridic ridiculously expensive for an oversized sweater. How can I get away um, with using less money and still have a sweater I love? And I looked in my stash and I had a lot of drops uh, baby merino in the color uh, gray. Uh, this is gray. Um, and I thought, okay, what can I combine with gray to um, make the right, uh, with the gray baby merino to make the right fabric. And I did have some puna left after my hazel sweater. Uh, so I combined some puna with um, drops baby merino uh, on the size needle that this is knit with just to see what my gauge would be and my gauge actually turned out to be right so this is knit using one strand of puna and one strand of drops baby merino so it's definitely not as fluffy as it's supposed to be and I think the stitches are um, I don't know how what you would say, maybe tighter, um, because there is no uh, mohair in this. Uh, but I really love how this turned out, and it's great to have uh, sweaters without mohair as well. I think mohair is nice sometimes, but I definitely think um, with sweaters I want to relax in and just throw on. I really enjoy for them to not be with mohair because um, even though I don't find mohair scratchy I do find it a bit irritating if I'm uh, going to relax and also um, since I use this both in summer and winter it's really nice to not have mohair because like sweaty summer days and mohair don't mix really well um, so that's my April sweater and that was such a fast knit because it was on huge needles. I think it's maybe seven, it's six or seven millimeter needles. Um, and it was really fun to do a v-neck. This and the Cumulus uh, T was uh, the first v-necks I've ever made. So I really enjoyed introducing some v-necks in my wardrobe as well. Um, and then after that and then after that it was May and in May I actually did not finish everything because May was a huge gift knitting month for me. I made a lot of uh, adult sized sweaters for gifts um, so I started on this one but I did not get to finish it. This is the camisole number no. 5 by my favorite things knitwear. After I'd knit one of our patterns, I was hooked and I wanted to knit more. Um, this definitely gave me some issues because I think it was just hard to understand the halter part sometimes. Uh, and also I made this with yarn I had unraveled from a previous project of mine. Uh, I'm just going to try something like this and uh, don't pay attention to all of my straps. Uh, but this is the camisole number five. It's a halter neck. Um, and I made this in Filcorana Merci that I unraveled from a previous halter neck I had that I just never used. Didn't really like how it uh, sat. So I decided to upcycle this that into this. Um, and this one I like a lot better. I think I knitted it a bit longer than I would want it to be uh, and also there is something about the Mercy in ribbing that's just a bit weird um, but I really liked it. This Mercy as well is a mix of cotton and merino wool so it's really nice to have some cotton in my um, summer wardrobe and this year I actually managed to knit one of my summer knits before summer was over. That rarely happens. I usually start my summer knits way too late and then they're all finished by the time fall gets here. But this one I actually finished at the start of June. Um, right as we had some nice weather actually so I got to use this a bit. Um, I do think it's quite hard to wear halter 
neck tops because I don't really know what to use underneath and I don't love the look of the straps um, but other than that I do really like this top and I'm going to try to use it more because I've definitely not made it used it as much as it deserves to be used um, but it's just other than the halter neck part it's just basic 2x2 two two ribbing and also all of the um, all of the uh, edges are done using double knitting and I don't know if Mercy and Cotton is a great yarn for double knitting because it is really loose um, in the neckline I've actually sewn in an elastic just because it's really loose um, as you can see it bunches up a bit so I think I had some issues since I made this with uh, a yarn that's almost 50% cotton but I do really like the feel of it and it is um, really nice in summer to have something that's a bit cotton so it has some pros and some cons um, and then kind of immediately after I finished that I cast on my next project because we were already in June and this is what I like to call my birthday sweater, but it is cumulus blouse own neck. Um, and I, when I saw Petit Knit, this is Petit Knit again, when I saw she released the own neck version of her cumulus blouse, I fell in love. I love the, uh, the own neck version of this pattern and uh, the reason I call this my birthday sweater is that I got the yarn for this for my birthday. My grandmother gave me, I think, eight skeins of Drops Alpaca Silk in the color Steel Blue. So this is knit in that. I have some leftovers as well because I only used about five, five skeins for this whole sweater. So it is only a bit above, above um, 100 grams. It's super lightweight. I think this is the lightest sweater I have whereas some of my sweaters are above 700 grams. This is just a hundred um, and I know I said I don't uh, love working with two strands of mohair and that's what kept me away from the cumulus blouse to begin with but since I received this yarn I didn't have to knit with two strands of mohair because one strand of Drops Alpaca Silk is kind of the same thickness as two strands of mohair. And then I also didn't have to bother with knitting with two strands at the same time. Um, it is a bit holy and since this is brushed alpaca instead of mohair it has a bit of a different fabric. It's just a bit more brushed or more compact than mohair is uh, but I really love this um, I made it a bit short uh, kind of everywhere because this is more of a summer sweater um, but yeah I really love this I love having a sweater that's like my birthday sweater and this was a really fun quick knit with this also um, the body I cord feels a lot better. It's still tight, but this one does not. This one does not curl, and it's not that tight that I have issues with it when I'm trying to pull it over my head. So I don't know if it's because the yarn is more appropriate or because I got better at knitting or what it is. But this one fits a lot better. Um, and after June. Uh, it was July and in July I actually knit one thing that's not up here. The only thing for myself I finished. No, I actually finished one more thing. I finished two things in July and none of them were like garments, but I finished this. This is the Everyday Brown by Naked Knit. Um, it is a really nice... Piece. I have not used it a lot because I think I knit um, the straps for this a bit long and also oh 
the part under the bust a bit tight. Um, but this is basically what it looks like. You can't really get a great idea of it since I'm wearing so many other clothes. Uh, but it is a really nice uh, construction and nice idea. I can show a picture of me wearing it uh, so you can see it better but I did that and I would love to use it more but I think I'm going to have to um, go back and cut these because I need them to be like this much shorter I think um, and then I don't know what to do about uh, this part but without all of these clothes it does fit better and it's also nice that it fits kind of snug so it stays put when you're wearing it but this is a really nice project so I want to be able to use it I just need to fix some things first um, this is knit in drops baby merino in the color desert rose and I don't think Naked Knits really has uh, clear sizes. You kind of measure yourself and go from there. So that's one thing I made in July. And then I also made my first ever Sophie scarf in July. I really <laughs> waited on this trend. I didn't really understand it. Um, I think that's mostly because I don't love having tight things around my neck um, so I very very rarely use it like this um, also I can't really understand how to tie it to make it look as pretty as everyone on Instagram but what I've been doing with this a lot is to either use it as a headband or use it to tie my hair in a ponytail um, and I've loved those ways of using it um, and used it like that a lot and also I got to use uh, my scraps from the Agnit cardigan this bow is made from the Drops Rura and Drops Kid Silk I got to make the April cardigan and this kind of opened the door to the Sophie um, scarf for me and after that I made a couple both as gifts and for myself so even though I didn't understand the trend for quite some time I did finally join everyone that's obsessed with it over on knitting Instagram and everything um, so those were the two things I made in uh, July and I made two things because they aren't really a garment um, but I did start on two projects in uh, July and I think the fact that I started on them both at the same time and then I went traveling alone with my son is the reason why none of them got finished and when they got finished they got finished basically at the same time uh, and those two projects are the camisole number nine and my direction loop sweater I think the camisole number nine was finished just a tiny bit before the direction loop um, and with this uh, I did a gauge swatch and my gauge was a bit loose on three millimeters so I did it on two and a half millimeters and uh, because my gauge was right with that when I did a gauge swatch but when I started knitting I actually knit a lot tighter when I was actually knitting than doing the gauge swatch so this is quite tight um, but I have not quite decided if I prefer that or not. I think I'm going. I am pretty sure I'm going to do another one in 2024 with three millimeters, just to see how I like that. Um, but this is camisole number nine. It fits fine. It's just really next to skin. Uh, and I made this in drops baby merino in the color bright green I think, maybe a parrot green, I can't really remember exactly what the color is called but this really really bright green and uh, when I found this green I just knew that it had to be the camisole number nine 
and I think this was also right after the camisole number nine had dropped um, so I made this and I really like it um, all of the edges here too are just knit but they are not double knit they are knit and then folded over um, and I love this I love having like a really bright statement piece in my wardrobe and having a camisole too that's um, a bit wider in the shoulder straps is also really nice uh, and I love pairing this with my uh, white agnet for example just a really plain cardigan with this really bright uh, statement piece I love that so I've been having a lot of fun with this camisole unfortunately since I finished it I think halfway into August we uh, summer was wrapping up it wasn't really hot anymore so I've I don't think I've ever been able to wear this on its own outside but I've worn this a lot with my uh, Agnit. I've also worn it a lot with my sweater number 14 v-neck just underneath. I love pairing knits together so having a piece that is so fun and bright next to all of my very neutral uh, sweaters and cardigans has been really nice. Um, and this was another my favorite knit uh, my favorite things knitwear pattern. Um, I really love her uh, camisoles, and I love how uh, beautiful this is. Even though it is really basic, I love the straps. Um, but I am really excited to see if I would love it even more if I did it um, on three millimeters. And then I have this sweater and this is by yet another new designer to me uh, and this is by other loops um, her direction loop sweater and i love the construction of this the construction is what absolutely sold me with this sweater and it's that you start knitting back here and then you knit each of these sides sides separately to make these kind of saddle shoulders uh, and then you pick up stitches and turn it into a sweater but I absolutely love the saddle shoulder of this and that the stripes go in one direction and then change and that the stripes start all the way from the neck I really like that when I was trying to decide what sweater to make because I knew I wanted a sweater in these colors it drops baby merino light gray and electric blue I really wanted to combine them together to make a striped sweater. I'm trying to make a striped sweater for myself each year. Last year it was this one and the year before that it was the Marseille sweater. But this year I was be uh, between the Lyon sweater by Petit Net and this Direction Loop sweater by Other Loops. And the, f and the thing that really swayed me was both a really new to me construction and a new to me designer and that the stripes start from the get-go I really love that look um, it is quite a boxy sweater it gives me really big shoulders because of this construction that the saddle shoulder is kind of a drop shoulder as well um, and there's just a lot of fabric here around the sweater and with the stripes as well I think it makes the shoulders look quite big but I love this sweater um, I use it a lot I love the construction I'm so happy with this that I bought um, learned about a new designer I learned some new techniques another thing I absolutely love is that the stripes go all the way through the ribbing and uh, so the ribbing starts here but you still do stripes with the same interval all the way until the sweater is done. You don't do that on the body, but I think it would be really nice on the body as well. But that you do it on the sleeves, I'm just <laughs> over the moon. I think this is one of my favorite makes of 2023, but just because it was a really fun knit. Um, this sweater broke uh, my needle twice. It broke both my four millimeter needle and my three and a half millimeter needle so it definitely put me through it but I am so happy with this sweater um, I think the original uses gepard 
yarn uh, and the <laughs> that type of yarn is super expensive and I knew I wanted to do it with Drops Baby Merino and I figured out that double stranding Drops Baby Merino would be about the same gauge as this sweater so that's what I went with and I was also really on the fence if I wanted the blue to be the main color or if I wanted the grey to be the main color but I ended up deciding to go with blue because blue is my favorite color and when I was working on the sho shoulders and starting to work a bit on the body I was questioning my decision a lot because it's the electric blue is really out there, it's a really bold color and so I was questioning a bit if it would be better to have gone with grey as like the main color but now that it's done I really like it and I'm glad I ventured a bit more with colors and really bright colors this summer. I haven't shown the pilling on the last couple of things because they just have not pilled. Um, this one really hasn't either. There are a few small pills on this but really nothing and compared with how much I've used this even though we are getting into the second half of the year with this one in August I've used this a lot. Um, this is like a sweater that I honestly throw on almost every day just because it's so chill. I really like how much space this gives me. 2023 also has been the year where I've tried to embrace more oversized sweaters. Um, but that's these are my two um, August makes, but one of them kind of I've counted as a July make. And then after August comes September. And in September I made the Eva cardigan. And this was my first ever time using Per Gunt. And I loved it. I was a bit afraid when making this that Per Gunt just was not going to be the yarn for me. I really wanted to like it because Pergent is a Norwegian yarn. Uh, but when working with it, it was so scratchy. When I had my knitting on my lap, uh, I had to like have multiple blankets or pillows between the knitting and myself because it would just scratch my thighs so badly through jeans, through tights, through everything. And if I just had one blanket, it would scratch me through that as well. But now that it's done, I've watched it, I've used it quite a lot. Um, I am really happy with how um, it feels. I can easily wear this next to skin. And I don't really have any problems with this being itchy or scratchy or anything. So I don't know if it was just the movement of the yarn when I was knitting with it that it was rubbing against me quite a lot because it just sits on me. It's not like it's going back and forth like that a lot. Maybe that was why it was super scratchy. But I also think washing and wearing has helped a lot. Uh, this is my only cardigan that has gotten buttons because this cardigan just really suited buttons, I felt like. Um, and I got these huge um, white buttons. And I have the same buttons because I'm making another one for my son also in a color similar to this with the same buttons uh, and I love this, my son loves this, it's a really nice um, cardigan and I think this is the warmest cardigan I have because Pergunt is really warm, Norwegian wool really warm so I used, I've used this a lot this winter. Um, the one thing about Pergunt though is that it pills a lot. Also in this dark color it's almost impossible to keep it clean from dog and cat ears because you see them so well. But this has pilled um, a lot even though this is one of the last things I made this year. I think this is the thing I have that has pilled the most. Uh, almost not only in 2023 but out of all of my nets. Um, so Pergunt apparently pills a lot, but um, I love it and I'm going to work with it again. And now that I have that deep pillar, it's not really an issue. 
Um, I love the fit of the Eva. This has um, the same construction as the Leo sweater, so even though I ended up not making that, I got to try myself at this technique. I actually love this so much that I'm making another one now for my sister, just because I love knitting it. But <laughs> just as when I was making this one, I'm also now having uh, problems because when doing the shoulder increases and the v-neck increases and everything, there's a lot uh, of numbers to keep track of, so you really have to pay a lot of attention. And when I knit, I usually don't pay a lot of attention because knitting is kind of what I do to have something mindless to do. So all of a sudden when I'm supposed to pay a lot of attention, um, I usually mess up. <laughs> So I love this, even though I had to frog quite a lot to make all of the increases around the shoulder right. And it's almost impossible to show because this yarn is so dark. It's the navy blue, uh, Pergint. So, but I love this and I kind of want to make myself another one just in a lighter color because then you can see the shoulder constructions and all the details a bit better. But that was my September project and then I started something else for myself at the very end of September because I thought if I don't start in September this is not going to be done in October and that was my Mopi sweater. I was uh, a bit afraid of this pattern but then um, Someone reached out to me on Instagram and asked if I wanted to join them in a knit along and that was kind of the little push I needed to uh, finally make this because I had the yarn for this laying in my stash for I think six months. Um, but I finally cast it on and once I cast it on it was actually way easier <laughs> to make than I had imagined and honestly I frogged uh, less on this than I did on the Eva um, and I really love how the cables look and even though I hate doing <laughs> this part I really love how it looks and all of the double moss stitch and the sleeves and I'm really pleased that I even got the cable and sleeves to kind of line up correctly on both sides um, for this one I used Drops Charisma and Drops Kidsit, both in the color of white. Uh, but my biggest issue with this is that it's just a bit too um, tight. It's not oversized enough. And I think that just makes it fit a bit weirdly. It kind of goes in right here. And I would just want this to be a bit more oversized. The sleeves also get a bit short because it's not kind of oversized enough over the shoulders and I don't know if that's because I have a wrong gauge but I don't really think so um, or it's me not blocking this aggressively enough I'm going to try to block it again just to see if I can get a bit more ease out of it because I do love this sweater and I want to wear it more but I just don't feel 100% when wearing it and I think I've heard uh, others talk about their mobi also being a bit tight, um, but I put a lot of time and effort and a month worth of knitting time into this, so I really wanted to fit and make me feel a bit better than it's doing right now, <laughs> because I just don't love how it fits around the shoulders and kind of has this weird crease and it's not great. <laughs> But I do love all of the cabling, all of the details, just the fit. There's something going on there that's not 100%. So I don't know, but I hope blocking could fix it. Just blocking it as much as possible because I think it is because I don't get quite enough of a dropped shoulder for it to fit correctly or maybe just this fit is not perfect for my body. I don't know what it is but it's just not it's just not exactly what I would want it to be but I do love 
like the idea of a mobby sweater it's just that this does not fit me exactly how I would want it but I'm glad I did it anyways I would maybe size up knowing what I know now but this um, taught me a lot and it made myself it made me challenge myself on a pattern I was a bit afraid of and even though it fits a bit weirdly it is really pretty so if I can't block it if it fits me in a way I love I might have to give it away just for this to receive the love it deserves um, and after the mobe I was in the mood for some simple stockinette and when Hope Kali um, searched for testers for this one I said yes I'll do it and that this is the never sweater I tested this for Kopikali uh, using drops lima um, this was a bit out there for me because as I've said I've not been super comfortable with oversized sweaters but I've been working at incorporating like tight fitting knits and really loose knits and I really wanted to try and see how I felt about it um, so I decided to um, be a tester for the never sweater and as you can see this is really big uh, it has a lot of positives uh, but because of the really wide raglan it kind of fits uh, the raglan kind of goes under the sleeves like that so even though it's super oversized you get a bit of shaping to your body um, still I knit this in drop slima as I said and I knit it in the color orchid because I've really been on a mission this year to kind of push my limits a bit and as you might have seen by now I usually go like white, grey or blue maybe with a sprinkle of green <laughs> Um, and really nothing on like the pink, lilac, red side of the spectrum so I wanted to challenge myself a bit with that and that ended up with this and I am so happy I went with this color because I love having uh, something in my wardrobe that's not so similar to everything else and I've been reaching for this a lot since I finished it. It's also just a really nice thing to throw on when you're chilling, knitting. Um, I have um, decreased the length of this a lot because I, since it's so oversized I didn't want it to be too long and I've also done a split hem. Um, that's not in the pattern either but I did that and tried to stop it like above my butt. <laughs> Just because it's so oversized everywhere else, I didn't think it really had to be oversized in length as well. And with the sleeves too, I wanted them to be kind of long, like uh, reach into my hand. But I didn't want them to cover my hand because that just makes it so hard to do anything practical. Um, so I just shortened everything so it fits more like a sweater but just really oversized. Um, this also gave me some issues because when I'm reading patterns I sometimes just skip a couple of lines so when this pattern said that you were supposed to stop increasing for the sleeves and just increase on the body I totally missed that line so I just kept increasing on both the sleeves and the body until I had reached the correct amount of increases and I actually worked like this much on the body after that, like a skein's worth and almost a whole sleeve, I think down to the cuff of the sleeve before realizing I've made a huge mistake because I was trying it on and the sleeves were just huge. Uh, it didn't look good at all. So I realized my mistake and then I had to frog and I think I had to frog like three or four skeins worth of work and <laughs> that was not what I needed but I decided to just get back on the horse immediately and uh, not to really do anything else knitting related before I had knit up all of the yarn I had to frog just so I wouldn't get totally 
um, and motivated to ever pick this back up again. And when I sat down and really focused on knitting on this and knitting that frog yarn back up, I think I managed to do that in one or two days. And since the sleeve then was a lot smaller, uh, they went a lot faster to knit. Um, but yeah, I love this sweater. I use it a lot. I don't think I would ever <laughs> make this pattern again, just because I don't think I need two this oversized sweaters in my wardrobe, but it's really nice to have one. Um, it also has a bit of German short rows here just to make the neck fit really nicely and I like the way the neck fits so tightly since it is such a large sweater everywhere else. And then the last two things I made were both in December even though I was originally supposed to focus on gift knitting in December, I just had so many good ideas uh, that I just could not let go of. So I made, first I started off by making this April cardigan and this was really made on a whim, it's really hard to show because it is all black. Um, this is knit with this is knit with drops baby mano double stranded because I did not want to spend money on mohair and my aunt had a lot of black baby merino so I decided to just chance it and hope the gauge would be right because once I decided I was going to make this April card again nothing could stop me. I think from the um, moment I decided that I need a black April card again in my wardrobe now until it was finished I think that was a week. <laughs> Maybe, and that was like me planning it out, me getting the arm, me knitting it. Me knitting it took five days. I knit on this. This was a mono monogamous knit because I just knit on this. Um, I don't know if you can see any of the details, but I really love the construction of the April cardigan. Saddle shoulder to shoulder increases to raglan increases. Uh, it just fits really nicely. I love that I now have a black cardigan. I love the way it fits, just a tight fitting cardigan. I love that it doesn't have mohair because it just feels so um, good and soft next to skin. Um, and yeah, I, I really am happy that I decided to knit this black uh, April cardigan. It's really nice to have something black in the wardrobe. I don't really have anything any sweaters or any cardigans that's black in my knitted wardrobe or in my regular one so getting one in my knitted one was really nice um, with this uh, as well as the Eva cardigan it's so hard to keep them looking uh, clean because all of the cat and dog hair in the house just <laughs> to this uh, cardigan so I have to like brush the hair of it all the time um, and still <laughs> I'm left with a lot of hair on it, but I think that's just the name of the game when you have dark knits and animals. Um, this, it's very hard to see, I don't know if you can see, but this has peeled a bit, even though this is very fresh. Uh, I think this one is a month old and it's already peeled a bit, but I've also used this a lot, um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So. I don't know, this ha don't, it hasn't buttons uh, yet, this one either, but this one is going to get buttons. I don't think the Agnet ever will, but this one is going to get buttons. I just don't uh, know what kind yet. But that is the April cardigan by Petite Knit. I've made a lot by Petite Knit this year. Um, and then uh, the grand finale to my year is that 10 days before Christmas I decided that I'm going to need <laughs> a Christmas dress. Um, I watched AK Nora knit and I just got too inspired uh, from her knitting her Christmas dress and I decided I'm just going to have to chance it and try to make one and I thought about it for a week I think and what pattern I wanted to do and I ended up 
choosing Augustine's number 16 uh, both because I really like the look of that and because that's a pattern I already have and that's originally a sweater uh, it kind of cuts off the skirt right where you're seeing it now um, with big <laughs> balloon sleeves and a square neck and it has uh, ruffles and a um, band you tie together in the waist as well. I didn't do those both because I was uh, starting to be quite pressed for time before Christmas and also because I like the simple look. I think the fact that this is a whole dress and the fact that it's bright red uh, is enough. It kind of speaks for itself. It doesn't really need more going on. So uh, I don't know. Let's see if I can show the whole dress. Um, I started working on this. I started working on this the 14th of December, and we celebrate 24, uh, the 24th. So I had 10 days to make it, and I finished knitting it December 22nd, and I finished weaving in ends and doing elastic December 23rd. So I just made it, and I had that most of that last day to just relax before Christmas and I'm so happy and now I have my Christmas dress for forever and I don't really have to stress about a outfit for Christmas ever again. Uh, I'm also really happy with how it turned out. I was really <laughs> afraid if my vision was going to turn out how I wanted it or not because this is originally a sweater pattern but it has a skirt in that sweater pattern as well, just a short one. So I just extended that. It hits me at about my knee. And I am so pleased with this one. With this one as well, I did some thinking about what yarn I was going to get because I, I'm trying to not spend too much money on yarn because I want to knit as much as I can, so I don't want to use up all of my money on really expensive yarn and then don't be able to knit um, for the rest of the year. So I decided instead of doing Drops Baby Merino, which was like the first thought that popped into my head, I decided to do it in Drops Flora instead because that was half the price, I think. Um, and it was like 25 or 35 meters more of yarn per skein. So not only was it half off, but it was also more yarn. So it was quite easy to decide um, on which of those yarn to pick. I decided to go with Flora. I tried to get as little yarn as I thought would be enough, but I still ended up with quite a lot of scraps actually. So this uh, dress could be even cheaper if I just had been better at calculating it. But I also wasn't using a lot of time doing math because I really needed to get going if I was going to finish it. Um, but that was my last uh, like garment of 2023. And I've forgotten to show the garments I've made throughout the year, but... Um, here are the ones I haven't talked about, and they're all made uh, towards the end of the year, I think September, October. I have my hipster hat that's knit in hedgehog fibers, merino DK in color Mayday. Um, I made a mistake with this one as well. I've made a lot of mistakes this year by not reading patterns. Uh, you're supposed to do the hipster hat on three and a half millimeters and this one is on a four millimeter. I have not quite decided if I'm okay with that or not yet. I haven't weaved in any ends. I haven't weaved in any ends for any of these really. But that's a project I made. I don't know if I'm going to rip it out and do it again in uh, on three and a half millimeter needles uh, or if I'm okay with it like it is now. But I do really love the colors and this, I'm excited to use this, whatever I decide to do, because I think this would brighten anyone's day. Uh, and right after that, I made a scarf. I had some yarn I didn't know what to do with. 
uh, and I tried a few different patterns, nothing really worked, so I decided to do a scarf. I have not washed or blocked this, but my hope is to be able to block it out because it is two by two ribbing, so it should be able to grow to almost like double the length. And then I think that could be a nice scarf. Um, I think I'm going to share this with my son, just a scarf for the both of us. And then I made another scarf because I still had uh, some leftovers from my hazel sweater that I wanted to get rid of towards the end of the year because I was just eager to get rid of as many yarns as possible before doing my uh, stash update at the start of 2024. I think I made this in November and it's just a huge <laughs> Uh, Selfish shawl. It's super warm. I used drops Puna and drops Alaska because I had some leftovers of that as well that I wanted to get rid of. So this is two strands of 100% alpaca. It's super warm. It's super large. Um, I can use it as a scarf. I could use it as a balaclava. I can use it as uh, whatever. So I'm really happy with this one as well. Haven't weaved in ends yet. But I have used it, I've used it quite a lot, just I have not weaved in the ends because I sometimes can't be bothered. <laughs> and then in December I made my December bow to go with my Christmas dress. They're not the exact same color. This is this is Strups Baby Merino and this is Flora and Kid Silk in red, but both are red, just slightly different nuance. And I have a hair tie in that so I can tie it in my hair and I've gotten use for this other than just Christmas as well because this is an easy accessory to just throw in my hair and I've gotten so many compliments for this one and people who are just slack jawed when I tell them I made it myself uh, they just can't believe it so that's always a really fun comment to get and then the very last project of 2023 was this Sophie shawl uh, that's in 100% mulberry silk. It's so soft, it's so lovely. I love the colors, I love blue. Um, I have not weaved in the ends yet, I've not used it yet, but I am really excited to uh, have this in my wardrobe now going into 2020. For, um, I think I made the size large in this one. I wanted to use up as much as yarn as possible because I just had one skein of yarn. Uh, I didn't quite do that. I think I still have enough yarn to make the small version of the Sophie shawl. Um, this yarn is Arakuana Yarns in Mana in the color Celestial and I love working on this. I love this color. I think this is one of the prettiest colors and yarns I've been working with this year. So I feel like I really ended the year on a high note. But that is, that's everything I made myself in 2023. I made a lot and I'm really happy with everything I added to my wardrobe and I I'm happy I knit with such a lot of intention and really added what I really want in my wardrobe to my wardrobe and hopefully I can keep that going in 2024 and not fall um, for the temptation of just casting on something because it's popular or pretty. Um, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video of me rambling on about everything I've made. If you did, please leave a like and a comment and if you want to and if you want to continue following me into this new year, please subscribe. Bye.